Hello, and welcome to this final lesson, which will introduce you to the theme of forecasting market growth. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to firstly, understand why market growth forecasts are important. Secondly, understand how to build growth forecasts. And lastly, size the opportunity for your organization. So far, over the duration of this course, you have learned to define and size a market, and then segment a market. In this final lesson, you will focus on forecasting market growth, which entails identifying the key drivers of a market size and growth, quantifying how big a market can become over time, and lastly, sizing the opportunity for your organization. To begin with, let's look at market forecasts. Once a market has been defined, sized and segmented, managers will often want to estimate its future size. This is done to gauge its untapped potential. Markets with high growth potential will contain segments that have not seen a full range of product or service offerings and hence offer organizations more opportunities to generate business and expand market share. Additionally, such organizations would have the opportunity to derive higher profit margins by offering value in a way that the market has not experienced before. Market forecasts, like as shown in the chart on the slide, help to size the potential opportunity. Forecasts are usually built based on historic growth rates and demand patterns. You need to ascertain whether the demand pattern is cyclical, volatile, steady, or perhaps a combination of all three, and then adjust your forecasts as appropriate. Most forecasts are built using financial models in a spreadsheet. Modeling future growth requires you to identify the key growth drivers or levers per market. These drivers will form your basic building blocks for forecasting market growth. The slide shows some common drivers. For example, if you are defining your market at an industry level, then consider population and GDP growth as key drivers. Or, if you are defining your market at a product level, then key trends in consumer demographics and attitudes may be appropriate. Market forecasts can be fine-tuned for accuracy by analyzing the key growth drivers for each segment, if you have this level of detail. The slide shows an example of segments in the fiberglass market. Note how the growth drivers differ depending on the end-use market for fiberglass. Through your analysis, it is normal to uncover multiple growth drivers influencing market or segment growth. In the example on the slide, the market for suntan lotion is driven not only by income levels, but also by country and climate patterns. The most uncertain type of demand to forecast is for new products or services. Here you need to uncover the fundamental need the product is serving and consider whether such needs are being met by similar or substitute products. You also need to model if there are any key enables or impediments to customer adoption. For example, in terms of access or switching costs. Another way to model the demand for new products is via S-curves. S-curves can help to model fast-growing product penetration over time. S-curves yield different growth rates for different stages of substitution from a slow initial uptake driven by early adopters to fast-growing uptake when the product goes mainstream, to slowing growth as the late adopters come on board. The S-curve name derives from the S-like shape of the demand curve. S-curves will often portray a more realistic forecast of growth than linear or exponential growth. The chart on the slide shows examples of S-curves in the consumer electronics industry. 
Here is a recap of the demand analysis stages, which you are following throughout the course. Let's now address the final part of this lesson, which concerns sizing the opportunity for your organization. When sizing an organization's specific opportunity, this means taking a market forecast and identifying the proportion that the organization can reasonably expect to convert to sales. To work out how big the opportunity is, start with the market profile, then define the proportion addressable by the product or service, such as middle to high income male individuals. Of the addressable market, you then need to determine the opportunity by making reasonable assumptions on the consumer conversion potential. For example, if the organization currently had a 30% share of an adjacent market, then this could be used as a proxy to estimate the conversion potential. The result is the forecasted opportunity. This slide shows how the opportunity sizing process can work in practice. Take time to review the rationale and calculations before proceeding. The key insight from the example is that the market's true potential is four to nine times greater than current sales levels. A marketing action plan could be put in place to drive a greater share of available spend. In summary, you have understood how to identify the key drivers of market growth for forecast modeling and the three main steps to size opportunities for your organization. When forecasting market growth, always remember to tie growth rates to the fundamental growth drivers in the market and its segments and adjust your demand patterns for cyclical, volatile or steady state industry trends. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.